Rovers manager was confident about taking on the league leaders at their home ground. Peter, you're here at Livingston. Livingston sitting top of the first division. You'll be coming here desperately keen to get the three points after last week's disappointment at Falkirk. Yeah, I think you're always disappointed uh, when you lose, especially against one of the, the promotion hopefuls as Falkirk are. And I think you'll be there at the end of the season. But the great thing about football, Jerry, you always get a chance to bounce back. And you can't ask for a better game than coming here against the, the title favourites, the league leaders on their own pitch, so it gives a chance to bounce back for a big game. So could Peter Heatherston's men bounce back against league leaders Livingston at Almondville? David has the answer. Get your money ready, Rovers fans. The club brought out a video last season after beating Dunfermline, and this was just as impressive. Rovers beat the petrol sortage to make the journey to Livingston, but forget four-star only. This was a five-star performance from Peter Hellison's men. Marvin Andrews drawing on divine inspiration to score the first. Rovers were motoring now, and it was one-way traffic at this stage. Alec Burns with his foot in the gas, and he'd turn round the obstacles for number two. That's six goals so far this season for Burns. He's Rovers' top scorer and playing with the confidence of a striker on form. Livy worked hard to get back into the game, although the feeling was growing this wasn't to be their day. David Bingham and Jerry Britton combined to create a decent chance, but the blockade and the Rovers' goal proved effective. Now, how's this for a penalty claim? Sasha Openill on Brian McPhee, and Livy every right to be angry when play was waved on. Jerry Britton brought out a fine save from Guido van de Kam, and then a quite extraordinary go-mouth scramble with David Hagen denied twice. Goal there would have brought Libby back into things, but their day was to get worse. Neil Alexander could only hold his hands up and take the blame for Rovers' third goal. Paul Tosh taking advantage. And Rovers added a fourth. The Livy defence unable to clear their lines from the corner and never mind a bus, you could drive a petrol tanker through the gaps in the home defence as Marvin Andrews wraps it up for the best result on the road this week. So the match at Almondville ends 4-0 to Wraith. The views of Jim Leishman in a moment, but first Jerry Hart spoke to Rovers assistant manager Kenny Black. Kenny, you've been labelled a coupon buster today with this result. Not too disappointed with that tag, are you? Eh, not too disappointed. It's not a coupon buster for me, I can tell you that. But it was a, it was a great performance uh, from us, uh, offsetting last week's disappointment against Falkirk. Uh, we knew we had to come here today against the league leaders and put on a performance and hopefully, first and foremost, not lose the game. Jim, I suppose an understatement here is to say that, that you're disappointed at that performance. You just never really got out of the traps today, did you? <clears throat> Well, we're, it's not just Jim Leishman, you know, the, the fans are disappointed, the players are disappointed. Uh, um, up until today, we've had a, a terrific start to the season, we can't fault the players. But as I said last week, if we thought, because we beat Air United, that we were, the league was done and dusted, we were going to get a, a, a real upset. And, um, you know, the Rovers came today, totally committed and uh, deservedly won the game. So a deserving victory for Wraith Rovers. So let's hear from the Starts Park manager, Peter Heatherston. Peter, we spoke before the game, you told us it was going to be an attacking approach by Wraith Rovers, but I don't think MD could quite expect the performance that your team put in today, maybe other than yourself. Yeah, we worked hard all week, especially after suffering the defeat against Falkirk last week, Jerry, which was, which was hard to take, so I thought maybe we deserved something out of the game. But uh, we knew during the week if we didn't come here and achieve something here, the Livingston could go nine points in front of us. So we had to come here with attacking formation, and at the end of the day, it's worked well for us. 